stubborn crickets again. I just on and on and on. But you know what? I'm noticing more and more people are coming around. Look at France, anyway. I said, don't go out in the streets and protest, but that wasn't for France. Obviously, that's what they do. But you see what happens. You see what's coming against them. You're watching the, you now the video going through the Twitter sphere is the, virally is the, uh, disabled man being ripped out of his chair for, by the uh, military, the police. And so this is what we've got to be careful of, that, that that's not necessarily what we want to want, walk into, in the particular United States, because we have a different type of mechanism running. And we're, we're a different type of mentality at some level as well. Uh, well, we're also crickets. So we have a little different way to approach this. But watch as uh, France is starting to see what we've been talking about behind the woodshed, what other people have been talking about, what once you read the documentation wasn't a question and anybody who tried to make a question we knew they were either didn't know what they were talking about or they were the the, the, the system uh, trying to get you to stop not look at sustainable development uh, this is the thing that's out there again the bar association seeks to promote this thing and this thing then now you see is a rule of law it's not law it's the rule of law and we have a whole different ball game and that's why I say you got to take a step back on what you think is going on when you notice that there's nothing you thought was supposed to be going on take another step back because this is a a bigger problem that's been developed over many decades before we even got here and it was being put in place before we, we got here or at least before we got aware and I'm talking way before the internet and so that that a lot of you all come come from since the or, or, internet and I just gonna say there's a whole different knowledge base that, if we were into it before, like in the 90s, the early 90s to the middle 90s, you got to see something that was not tainted by what's happened after. And I think a lot of that tainting may actually be part of the problem, part of the what do you the the, the dirtiness of the, the the obscurity, making obscurity in what was seemingly pretty clear at the time. And that's where I kind of come through. And I got a good, I got an idea to see. Uh, I got a little glimpse of that before. I told you that for some reason there's a generation that's just going to be the witness. And I also now realize it's not just the witness because you have to do something. But we are the witness of a transition. And we're, it took us a long time to see it. And so you have to understand that's our frailty. Long time. We have a delay before things start to happen to us. So before I forget, this is a BTWRLM296. This episode behind the woodshed. And um, before I get too much further, even, uh, thank you to Sound Minds, and I've been here 2017, and putting together a video on last week's audio. So, just to let you know, I wanted to do this broadcast that way. I wanted to be able to put stuff together real time and, and have it available. It just takes too much, way too much work. And so they did a, uh, or he did a very good job. And I don't know if there's some help going on. It went through Facebook. I don't get Facebook, folks. I just, I never, I knew never to get into that. And I don't. And, but, but there's lots of people that do. And so that's where it was posted. And thank to Vin E to let me know that. Uh, thank you for that time to interject. I'm humbled that you put the time into that just to show the basics and then to go on beyond the Kennedy thing and the graphic, <laughs> the graphic video that I'm sure we all saw without noting it in real time uh, that came out later. And I do believe it's almost uh, somewhat of a trauma-based uh, programming in us. But uh, that doesn't mean that we have the uh, we don't have the luxury to let that get us down. And at some point, I'm here today, after whatever I've been through, uh, to say we we can do this if we just want it to be. We don't. We can make lots of excuses. We can give up. We can do lots of things. And, and I can't say that any one thing is the way to go. But I can say that lots of ways are going to be the way to go. And we're seeing that. I, if I, I keep telling you. If it wasn't for the successes that we're having, even though they seem like snail pace slow, they are still successes in the more di more better direction. More better. The, the better direction. Back, to, and I say back, like it's some troglodyte. No, it, it's back to where we were really more respectful of ourselves and really for the United States, our property rights, which gave people a place to stand, you can def a place to defend from. And that was supposed to be a sanctuary. And if you look at international law, sanctuary is a very interesting place as well. And so I come through that view, and again, I, I measured in what I look at. I see that it was there, and it was removed, and they're trying to keep it removed. And I'm thinking, well, why don't we go to where there's an objective basis? That's really my whole basis here to move on. Let's find an objective foundation to work from, because I also have the eyeballs and the witness that when you didn't, when you started making it up, 
They use that to club you to death like a little baby seal. And they continue to do it. I watch it all the time. And, and so, so let's get uh, on to uh, more of the tabs here. Just, it's just the ongoing thing I, uh, that's going on to take us down. You can step in at any time, folks. It's a, it's a target-rich environment in this war against us. In fact, we're going to hear, if you didn't hear it from me, and you didn't know it was ongoing before, and you haven't figured it out, or even if you have figured it out, there's always neat to hear other people come up with it. We're going to show you you're in a war. I mean, I don't care if you even don't like the Libra Code, you don't care about looking at you don't think you don't care about Title 50, you don't care about your equal rights is actually extortion, wrongful extortion at that. Go read all the it's all the words, folks. I don't make any really have stop making stuff up. I stop really working from opinion. Uh, all I do is just recite what I can find somewhere. It happens to be totally different than most people approach this. In fact, I'm watching something coming out of Minnesota. Uh, thank you, Rancho 42, to let me go with that. It's way beyond what I can keep up with, but all the earmarks, I, I, I know exactly how that came down. And people were, people approach that Minnesota, there. it's a boundary type of, a, uh, it's a, an expansion on the ditches over there, some law. It, it totally came by a federal alternative dispute resolution process that nobody saw. And so everyone comes up with their ideas on what they need to do, and they really need to take a step back, start from the beginning again. And where they start, where you're supposed to start is the objective basis. The objective ultimate evidence is the patent documents. You start there, and then you go into how the process that spent 10 or 15 years to creep up on everybody there, you, you, de 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 you deconstruct it, and you show within their own administrative procedures they failed. And they failed, but we know they failed because they're interfering with, I'm uh, going to take a presumption here because I have never seen it. These exclusive possession grants evidenced by the patents, or even a state certificate of warrant, or however they talk, talk about it, are uh, going to be infringed, and are being infringed, which means they violated something somewhere. And, and it's pretty easy when you know the system where to start looking. Their APA, they didn't go look at the things that they couldn't do, and they went and blew right through whether or not they actually did the AP, Administrative Procedures Act in that state. Uh, and uh, Minnesota is that interesting state. If you go look right in their constitution, they recognize something new. I was exposed to me by one of your researchers that called me and or contact not called me but contacted me. Uh, you told me the word the term lodial is in their constitution. That was a complete. I had to go. Okay, well, uh, I was told wrong as far as that they dropped it because almost all courts, the Supreme Court, I think I've read uh, things said that the, the term lodial was not used in this country, the United States of America. Now, now we see that it is. And that's fine, because now you get to jump back and say what it was. Now we do have to jump back to England and see what it was. And you're going to find out it's very powerful. And so if there's anybody, uh, any group or any grant, uh, any authority coming at the federal level or through uh, through state and attacking your property, there's a violation of law somewhere or a rule. And you need that's how you need to attack this. You don't just say, I need a remedy and I'm going to just pick one. You go find out where the actual harm was, and then you look at what you... Uh, have options about, and it may be one or two, it may be all those things. And so I, mean, I got off a point, but uh, moving over to uh, my tabs and trying to get down, I've got so many more to go on here always. I'm just always shaking my head on how much there is to talk about. And I was uh, listening to uh, Grimner on uh, a Freaker's Ball, I think, or maybe Balls to the Wall. He's saying he's going to do and maybe get started a new show. Uh, and, uh, and and bring up all the stuff he never talks about. I mean, that's exactly what I've been saying for you know weeks and years here. There's just so much extra to talk about. And so you just do a couple extra hours sometime just to undo my tab so I can keep going. There's so much that we can point out. And that's, I guess, part of the frustration for me. There is so much out there. I said there's a target-rich environment. Why aren't we addressing those targets? Somebody out there somewhere can address any one of these targets. It's, uh, there's enough of us to cover to cover it. And so, I just, I'm just amazed that we let this stuff hit us, and, and, and we don't, we, we think it's okay to let it continue to hit us. We think it's okay to be the accessory to the crime against us. Uh, we think it's okay to believe m that we know better than what's really going on in reality, and, and then addressing that reality. And then we, as I see it, as you start to address it, the reality is a fiction too, but it's because it's a fabrication outside of the normal law. And they made it look real. They made the alternative, the new normal, the alternative look like it was law. And you consented to that. And that's the ADR process I keep talking to you about. It's consensus-based. All I have to know, and like let's say the climate change, 
is that it's consensus. The scientists have a consensus-based outcome. I, that's all I need to know, folks. I know exactly what's going on. It's a treason against any country that recognizes property rights. And, okay, so I said that. Any of you that, you don't have to know about my uh, the court case uh, we filed in 2013. You just need to go read the law and you, the, the code and their, their own statements, and they'll tell you that. But see, I have another thing that I, prove, that I set back on. We have a default judgment against the Bar Association, the very same people that make the decisions in your life, that they would not answer to the very thing that I just told you. That they are part and parcel to allowing methods of of implementation of sustainable development through their your legislatures that destroy your country and your way of life and your property rights. And one of the property rights that they're going to destroy, it's not even pro well, I guess it is a property right. Uh, when they say a fundamental right, it, again, we go to the, the right to bear arms. I'll get that next. First, what's coming out and finally, and what I was getting to with the France thing, it's bubbling out, folks. It's this sustainable uh, corruption and destruction, this tyranny is coming out across the globe. You see this in France. See, uh, I'm, I'm, ho I'm hoping people don't lose the fact that this was a carbon tax that they're, that they're going against. They also now come out with a big old list of stuff. I'm hoping they start tacking it on to the sustainable development, the short sheet about what they're really speaking to, because carbon tax is really the extension of climate change, which is a tool and weapon used to implement sustainable development, or as they have said, they, the UN, uh, those that are implementing the, the minions that, in, uh, that implement this, the uh, next agenda till 2030 is what they're implementing right now. They're getting it. And so people are starting to get, um, they're starting to be vocal, if you will, local. In France, they do it the way they do it. And I'm happy to see that, but for us in America, I don't think that's going to be the way it'll work. Uh, because I think we have a little different uh, approach, and I've seen that we do it uh, differently without all the needs of the riots. I've already been in the streets myself uh, doing things, and it works to kind of give a, a note to people, but you're only receptive to the people that want to see you, uh, and, and you don't really aren't effective. Once we got into the Jefferson Mining District, we started to approach this from an internalized formality. Like I tell you, do your comments. Well, Well, that allowed us to do even more powerful things than comments called coordination. And when we started to apply that, then we started to show we are that witness that shows that the agencies, the federal agencies, are not staying within their authority and utilizing fraud and felonies to to make it look like they have an authority. And once we started doing that, I say for the most part, a lot of the nonsense started to shut down. The the, the faucet of destruct the 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 flood of destruction. Uh, was tapered a lot, if not completely, at this point. And then, like I said, we get, luckily, uh, and this is not a complete uh, uh, shout out and support for for Trump. I told you the way they were coming at it that would give us some breathing time, and it has. It's not complete. We're not really going to do uh, see what we wanted to see completely yet because this is not enough of y'all. And I hope maybe there will never be. And so I'm hoping that 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 changes. But. Uh, he's also doing some things you're seeing recently within his administration are coming out to support the very thing the French people are den are uh, rejecting, even though Trump says that they're supporting a cl the Paris climate deal problem. It's not because the United States is still sub is still promoting sub sustainable development. It's it's almost ingrained now. It's a metastasized cancer. And so this and then you see the, again. I'm always focusing back to the bar. They're the key problem. We really have to do what miners used to do. We have to get rid of these attorneys. Maybe filter out the ones that are the, the real good. There are some good lawyers now within that. They do do some help. They do see the harm. But they're in a system like any one of us. Uh, that, that's overwhelming. So they pick a spot and they start to to work it out. And and they, and they do what they can there. And they do they do pretty good work. In fact, I ran, I ran across another guy. I think Gary L sent me you know, working on some things that are going down in the government. I don't remember all this stuff, but I know it's, I saw it. Uh, the gentleman sounds like the, they're after it in the right way. And so I can't wholesale the whole thing, and I won't. The point is that there's um, this thing has gone beyond the, the common man, even though they talk about doing common sense and common things. Uh, the common they're talking about is the, is the global common. That's not good for anybody that's got property rights, an individual right of any sort. And you're going to hear a little bit about this today and then moving on further. Uh, but, but, but what's come up is this uh, administrative side nonsense. You start finding out that the government is just not um, tailored to really do much of anything. And a lot of that happened and continued because we didn't stand up a people. We were told by Thomas Jefferson, if I, I gotta keep repeating this, it takes an educated, vigilant masses, to, the educated, vigilant masses to be 
uh, stopping all this nonsense. And when we don't, we don't keep that republic. Uh, we then allow those that want to call it democracy win. And so that's where we are today. And when we look at the rudiments of the law and we start to assert that in the local, in the sense of the way it's supposed to, all this stuff that comes adjunct to that and foreign to it is silenced immediately. And so this is my frustration with the all y'all that won't step up and really take find that spot for yourself and and just jump in because once you go to the objective basis it's it cleans up pretty quick or you find yourself a you have an, an a, a a criminal and that's going to take a little longer but it's all still a record needs to be made about that and you need to go through the process of the uh, hopping and skipping and jumping to try and make it look a plot like the official is a plausible has a warrant to do what they're doing, but you just keep plugging away, and eventually uh, that uh, you'll find either that that official disappears or they have to capitulate and move you to the next step. So uh, this is the vigilance that you need to keep on it. But uh, going over to we're finding over and over we've been talking about these trillions. I don't normally talk about this stuff that sounds sounds so stupid. It's there. It's not going to really do anything in my world. Uh, but the, the trillions and trillions that are lost by the um, by the uh, Pentagon, and they're really just a, uh, you see the best uh, ad accounting practices is what they use. It's like best science. They have loopholes within that. If it's been determined what they're doing is the best accounting practice, then they're not going to be really held to account to it. They can use that as the excuse. It's like a license. These are best accounting, best sciences. All these best things are excuses. In other words, I tell you, when the best science is fraud, they get to use that. It's a li it's their license to use fraud. Now, it's not, but that's what they, they, the record shows until someone steps up and prop, I say properly because I do see there is a way to do it. And you do it that way. I would say you do that properness because it really does trim down what you're doing and it keeps you away from what happened to us, or a lot, not us, not myself, but because I was always cognizant of this problem. Uh, it keeps you from thinking that your opinion is what works and then you get to push that. No, you just stay in the objective basis. And you show where it failed, the system's failed, and or there's a crime within the system that perpetuates a problem. And now you've got a nice clean record. You don't have to worry about your opinions. Uh, that uh, we find out in this defense uh, budget uh, snafu that everyone's now knowing. Again, people, this is all coming, bubbling to the surface. More and more people are starting to understand this. It's starting to make less sense and mess, less and less sense to people. Uh, that it comes up that the... Uh, uh, the answer to the Pentagon is that they've had some some problems in their audit. What I wanted to point out in this one story was very interesting to me because it just here's another notice. It's written uh, through the New York Times. To me, it's like these little insert inserts of truth. You can uh, ignore them, or you can you you can uh, you can notice that they're truth, and then you can consider that in your equation on how you approach this. I say this is very important to understand what you're up against. It's why you, I go to Title 50 and how that I go to the national security problem because that's what you're really up against in this. You'd be up against that if Lieber, uh, uh, Francis Lieber was correct, and you'd be correct uh, looking at it if you'd realize that they'd eliminated every uh, every permanent war, uh, permanent war or emergent, excuse me, every permanent emergency except the Trading with the Enemies Act, or, or whether or not you notice that they do have war uh, going on and ongoing declared, like the war on drugs is an actual war, and this is where they get their their out. And if you unless you realize that and Put that in your equations when you're when you're looking at going against this. You're going to have run into the uh, well. You eventually find that they have a loophole, and you'll be a lot of work and be dejected at the end. And you could have, if you just listened ahead of time and applied that to the calculations of your strategy and tactics, you will have that one covered. At least you'll meet it. You may not be able to best it, but you'll meet it. And where you where you can show that there's a burden on the other side, you win by the failure of their burden to overthrow when you met their problem. And so this is a real uh, subtle, tactical thing I'm talking to you about. I always tell you about this. And again, I tell you, you really won't understand this until you get involved. It's so subtle what they've got going. I mean, it's, a, it's an evil brilliance, uh, if you will. But it's still, it's... Uh, it, it can be addressed. It's just going to take some time. Like anything that, like I keep telling you, the only analogy that keeps popping in my head is we got a wagon fell off the road. Uh, it was our country. We need to push it back. I say our country because that's where these laws, everyone say, oh, it's the law, it's the law. And we are, because we're not that educated masses vigilant against oppression, we've allowed it. So we look like the laws look like they're negative to us. In fact, they were actually supposed to be a, new, a neutral peace peacemaking measure when peace was... Uh, was broken, breached the peace, and as a control on this thing called, that's, that, that looks like government, that's really a bunch of, a bu just a bunch of 
psychopathic criminals uh, in the caucusocracy we've now developed. It's not this republic, it's a caucusocracy. We can put all kinds of labels on it, just the worst risen to the top, and we're allowing it all to rule us. But here's the Here's the thing in this in this Pentagon audit. They they agree that there's all this money out, but they just say, oh, it's just an it's an accounting error. Who cares? Uh, it's a little bit of egg on our face, but it's not so uh, so much of a big deal. Well, it all depends on how you look at it. But my focus was on this paragraph, uh, regard relating to uh, to this condition. Uh, they say the Pentagon had nearly three decades to prepare for this accounting judgment day. Actually, there was supposed to be a judgment every year or even sooner whenever that was declared. But uh, here, how, that's how this problem, uh, they make it sound like that was the judgment day. And you, you've kind of passed by that it was, it's been, this, this failure has been going on. This dereliction of duty has been going on, on and on and on. So here we are. We're all the accessories to this, uh, this crime. Uh, and what do we expect? But uh, okay, we continue because we allow it. That's who we are. Uh, accounting judgment day. Okay, it's supposed to be a judgment day. It's supposed to happen all the time. There's accountability every day. And this is, I think, the problem with some of these stories. But anyway, keep going because it tells something we're going to get to that I think is very important for you to hear. And it's just what I've been telling you, uh, but in a different fashion, acknowledged by somebody else. In other words, let me point out, they said America changed uh, the, a day that happened and the, it, America changed. And I looked at it and said it didn't really change. What they're doing is changing it in everyone's perception. And until they attack that, we're not going to really get farther. But anyway, by while federal agencies are mandated by Congress in 1990 to begin performing annual financial audits, I remember, remember Kaffer here is sitting there all the time anyway since since 1954, where all corporations must make uh, keep records and make books. That's the change I found from the 1939 laws in the 1954. Why is 54 important? Because in 1953, I found evidence of at least 26 states changing their whole structure of government, governance, now they move it into, and they went to a corporate style underneath the Bar Association's Model Business Corporation Act. Isn't that interesting coincidence that the next year the, the federal government saying make records and keep, book, keep books, and, and uh, everyone did. So it's all federal as far as I can tell there, and it's all monetary, excuse me, fiscal. So, but uh, let's keep going. I guess see, see when I read these paragraphs, folks, there's a whole th bunch of stuff that gets flying into my head, and I just went through a little bit of stuff talking about uh, to, to you, so you understand when I'm reading this, these paragraphs, I'm reading in a in in a maybe a maybe a, maybe some of you do this, but the way I just went through it, but this is how I read. Uh, there's a lot going on in my head about what I've read about that I don't. There's no question in my mind that's what's happened. That makes sense only from the perspective that most people don't understand. And so I read with that, and I keep going on with that, and I see that there's admissions being made that people don't. It goes right, it flies right underneath everybody's radar, like seemingly most everything does. That we can apply once we start to see it. But while federal agencies are mandated by Congress since 1990 to begin performing an annual financial audit, the Pentagon resisted for so long that it became the last one to comply with the law. There's supposed to be one done every year, folks. So this was a special law, and it was not so special, was it? But at any rate, private companies accountable to shareholders couldn't get, get away with that. Well, we don't know, folks. We don't know. I think when you find out that, like Clint Richardson's uh, Corporation Nation, you're going to find out that the government's in all those things, too. And since nobody really looks at this, these statements are are kind of interesting to me. It couldn't get away with it. Well, couldn't it? If you look at Title 50, it says they get away with whatever they want to because it's a national security problem. And in this case, they're doing the past 53 condition in 54. They're actually giving you a best accountings answer that these are just uh, just errors somewhere. Plus and minus, as a matter of fact, they're not all ne negative. They're just 21 trillion mind uh, out of mind uh, nonsense dollars, none accounted for accurately. Uh, getting back to this, it's um, but audits. Okay, so private companies accounting to shareholders couldn't get away with that. And here's the the through the, the line that just uh, you just kind of have to shake your head. It's the the face plant face palm moment. Uh, but audits are hard work, says this 
opinion in the New York Times. The, the Pentagon hadn't done all this since 1990 because audits are hard work. It, it is your media today. So anyway, let's read the paragraph and get on be, uh, with this. But, but audits are hard work. Most defense officials aren't business experts. And to some, bookkeeping and the other management operations just aren't a priority in wartime. Which, since September 11th, 2001, has been a permanent state. Now, if you hadn't heard it before, here's the New York Times, the mouthpiece of the government, telling you that's what America changed to on 9-11. It was a lie. I don't know of any war that was actually declared. Oh, this war, they call it, is titled War on Terror, which I know, in fact, is a war of terror against y'all. But here's the statement that says, on that day, America changed because they implemented a permanent war. And I've been telling you, you better start looking at this whole deal through an occupation sense or a wartime sense. And until you start doing that and start going back that way, you're going to be not doing so well. And the people that claim to be the authority are the manipulators of this whole condition anyway. And I talk about the Bar Association. They are the ones that are implementing this. Wow, through one of the branches of government, that's one-third of the decisions of your life, at least. And it ends up being the final decision on what guides the rest. And so we have a serious, serious problem in all here. But here, here to me was the statement. Now, they, uh, they aren't in the business. Well, they're supposed to have the people that they are in the business. Their CPAs are supposed to be doing this. This is not an excuse. This is the lamest paragraph I've ever read. However, they're telling us the truth in that statement. They cover it up with two jokes. They cover up the truth with two jokes. Perfect, perfect comedian right here. This has been a wartime effort since 2001. I keep, you're going to say, okay, get on with the point. Now, that is the point, folks. No one's responding to me in that. They just, you want to go right past it. It is a permanent state. Now, for most of us, say permanent is, is pretty, pretty permanent. Except when I find out in, in uh, if you go look in the construction statutes, in Oregon statute, you'll see in seven, 174, 510 or so, you read down through those uh, few next few statutes, you see that the permanent laws of the people were substituted. Well, that means that permanent's not permanent, isn't it? And so, whoever is the occupier can come on and change this stuff as they want. You need to reoccupy your own life, your own world, your own laws, your own protections, the system that's overthrown, been overthrown. You need to go permanently take, take that out. Because there is now declared, if you didn't know it before, after 20 years almost, uh, the, the clarity that says, this war of terror is a permanent state. And, and so anyway, I, I don't know if you appreciate what this statement would say relative to what I've been telling you for years. And why, you, until you really get this, your opinions on what's going on, your constitutional beliefs, your thoughts of what it says and what, you, what should happen are irrelevant to an occupation or a wartime condition that you need to speak through. And that gets you into, you want to get all you guys, you folks in there that say, oh, admiralty and get all horrors and the face fear and all this other stuff. Go in there. Don't run from that. Go in there. And go find the concept of neutrality, and then you'll be closer to what you need to do. And then I say combine that with what that that uh, government, that that that'll, that'll occupier, that military power that can destroy you, how it's also violating its obligations and duties. Even in military times, that can be a serious problem when it's on the international stage. And this is why we start looking across the pond, and that becomes important, because now we have peoples, different people in different countries, coming to the time, coming to terms with what's been put on them. And it's going to take the peoples of the world to have this mindset that is be developing in the world now. So I just kind of think about, you know, you wonder, like I wonder, what am I doing here? What am I telling people? Who's responding? And I don't know what part I play. 
I mean, I only got a few people that listen. I only have a few outreach. No one listens to the Twitter, all that thing. I don't have a broadcast. I don't have a bunch of people promoting it. But you know what? The things that I've been saying have been a general idea that other people must have been saying because the world is slowly rising into what what I've been talking about, and I'm certain there has to be others. Again, that's pretty cool because I told you, if you're standing, you look at this thing correctly, you're standing on this on the edge of a stinking abyss that we, as a peoples across the world, cannot slide into. They want us to slide into it. They'll ask us to slide. The alternative that they present will be for us to slide into it, but it won't be we, something we have to resist. And you're seeing it overtly in France, but I say it's already met, the, the method of that, that overt problem is metastasizing the United States of America, and you're going to have to treat that a little bit different, and it's really quickly treated if you just step up, and it can be done as simply as writing letters. Sometimes it may take a presence somewhere in some body, uh, some uh, meeting body, but there's some of you out there that can do that and do it. Um, those of you that can't, don't hesitate to write the letter. Simple letter. I just really can't understand. I see so much stuff going through chatting and uh, the Twitter and the Facebook, and you can't sit down and write a couple of those paragraphs on a certain point that's actually doing something instead of just yakking about it. I just am blown away that we would prefer to do the inane things and not do something. Just take a percentage of that time and write something principled and on point and then stick to it and be persistent on that point. Whatever your current opinion on the effectiveness is, you become that cog in the gear, the sand in the grain in the gears. You become the the log in the spoke. You become even more. You end up becoming the wind that blows their house of cards down, and you just don't see that now. As I said, we're so close to doing that, and I see the the, the world, the, the people of the world, are maybe maybe coming to. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping I see this. I still see. Like in France, they're trying to not show you. This is a, what did I, I wrote down, I added a B to Macron's name. It's McCarbon. It's the McCarbon tax. He's my, uh, President McCarbon. Macron had to be McCarbon. He wants to put, he's a globalist. People are seeing that. How are they seeing it? See, they're not seeing it by the way I see it. And maybe some of you actually. They see it because the people have been living in austerity. They've been living A21 and don't understand that. And my problem with all that is that that's not making the head of the list. And I think that's the part of the, uh, the distraction. Oh, let's start looking at the tear gas and the people in the wheelchair and all this other stuff. What you, you have to translate to all that is the effect. And the cause is this plan that's been underfoot, under our, in our, uh, under our skin for decades. And we can identify it. It's called sustainable development. It's being implemented, and austerity is one of them, and it all eventually goes down when you read it. It gets you down to sustainable debt. And sustainable being what a third-party, non-government governance does to you. Because you are obligated. Because you are the problem. And so you could sit there and be quiet, or you can write the little letters I, I'm saying to do, find something to go to address. In the United States, is pretty easy. Maybe not so much in France, but that's okay. Do where you have to. Uh, for the United States, I don't think that, uh, well, I haven't seen much at all. You, you, go, you have more people organized to subvert your causes in the streets in the United States of America than I think is worth your time at this point. That opinion that I just told you could be incorrect given you have enough organization and can protect yourself um, against that. But otherwise, we have a much more peaceful, if I say it this way, much more peaceful ways. And writing letters doesn't seem like a lot. But persistence on a problem, when you focus that the persons, the people, the persons, or they're the persons, the government officials, are actually acting contrary to law and brought their answers and outcomes by methods that the law does not recognize, is the answer to all this. Whether people will agree with it or not, I'm not. I don't even want to argue. You can go ahead and continue arguing. I know different. Yes, right now it's a snail's pace, but that's the problem. As soon as we get more, we're going to get the little turbo chargers on our little snail, and it's going to start moving right along. It's just a matter of when you decide to do that for yourself and for us. So here we have it: uh, the permanent state. It's a permanent state of war. I think this is an absolute truth within the context of, of the condition. 
inside the context of MSM. They're giving us a truth. It's the notice. Now, you can deny it or agree. You can say, oh, it's a war. What do I do with it? Well, look at what it's doing to you. Forget that. Look at what the war on, on, on drugs has done to people. Now you got this war uh, war of terror that they call war on terror, and, and then now you're allowing all this nonsense like from TSA and all these other things to come down. They're going to effectuate the real ID. You, all the stuff I'm talking to you to do with the silent weapons, quiet wars, they're integrating your life. You're going to hear that if I ever get out of here. You're going to hear how what I've been saying. It's, um, wow, it's right here. They're doing it. And they're connecting it all up for us. So here we start. I'll just move on. A permanent state of war. And then we're going to hopefully get to a spot where you're going to watch all the corporations coming into tow to support the military. It's fascinating to watch this. And no one does a thing about it. Oh, you complain. But no one takes the time to step back and say, oh, wow, this is the way the, they're moving this, this column, this battalion uh, as an attack this way. What are we going to do with uh, How do we stop that? It's a whole different thing. And so everyone wants to focus on the Second Amendment. And uh, the Bar Association is focused on it being an NGO to the UN. And they promote sustainable development. And the UN uh, agrees that there need, needs to be a, a knot tied in the barrel of a gun. While at the same time they take their white uh, their white vehicle troops and blue helmets with their guns to go shoot up nations to as a, as a the front uh, movement and front uh, aggression uh, to to support the United States or Britain or some other or Israel in their in their overthrow. So it completely stop making sense, folks. So that's what you look at. And so now we have a problem. You point that out ahead of time and say that they're not worthy. But they come after your Second Amendment. Who makes the decision? But the judges. Something came down to the Third Circuit. Second Amendment is a second rate right, as a as a uh, this author uh, um, describes it, and they're deciding that. They do this on legalisms. There's certain standards that they utilize to interpret laws. And this is part of the game there that they get through that I try to say, if you have the opportunity to read how they do this, you need to understand this because this has to built into your calculus if they, you have this legal calculus to address the legal calculus that they use to, to negate it. They have these standards that they put on it. And I say you walk into these courts and you do it in equity and you do it without a without an issue. You don't give a court a place to have an answer. You make it so airtight that the other side can't answer. That's a default. All right? And then you'll really see another problem creep up. You'll find out how, how truthful it is. That your, your country, the thing you, wherever you live under rule of law, you are not living in any sort of peace whatsoever, and that's up to you to stop, not up to them. They're the, they're the oppressive occupier. That uh, They have these standards, and I'm going to go through the standards because that's important to find out. It's like the rules of evidence. If you don't speak through the rules of evidence, it's partly what I say. You have, when you have an objection, you have to have a reason, and you have to have a standard for the, for the objection through the rules. For the reason of the objection and by the reason of the objection, and that's where you hear the court saying whether or not it's overruled or not. And these rules are set up, and it's like a Roberts rules, I guess, for law. It's uh, fairly straightforward at some level, but uh, you make sure that you bring your objections with a reason. Everything is objection with a reason. It's not to be a good one. It just can't be your ideas on something. But here they have levels of scrutiny over these rights. And this court case out of this circuit uh, determined that, in other words, the way they determined is that they started to use what this one dissenting judge calls armchair decisions. The fact that they did this in this case brings the level of scrutiny applied way, way, way down into beyond regulatory authority. And this is the interesting problem. This will slip by a lot of people especially the people in Second Amendment interests, if you have, want to watch how, you don't want to sit there and watch it, but you're watching how they're destroying this. This is the way for you to understand how to stop that and get people that are all involved in this to not allow that to happen in the reduction of how the standard they apply to the constitutional conditions in this decision allows, as this descending judge says, armchair, dis armchair interpretation to bring the scrutiny standard by which they would decide a constitutional right, prohibition against the government, actually, into their opinion. And so this case fell against the people that were doing it. The dissenting judge says, by doing the standard that the judge 
that the just the two judges who voted for it did. They flipped the burden that would normally be on the government onto the people that were suing the government for its wrongful action. And so, again, this is a very interesting story. This is a very interesting report on this case. And it, it points to the things you have to understand. Now, I, I'm not much on the uh, looking at the standards because I, and I'm not asking you don't take my word for it. I've found that if I make a complaint or a paper or whatever, a position that's found in law, and I don't make it an issue, there is no scrutiny to apply. So I've kind of training myself, if I can call it that, to not do the things that would bring an, a, a judge to be able to apply a standard, if that's follow, if you can follow that. In other words, like for these land law things, it's really about the titles and it's about what they say, pretty black and white. There's really no option there. And when you look at the laws within the states and you find them, like in Minnesota, you got um, melodial, and you realize what that really is. And then, like, corollary to that would be that statute under Oregon law, uh, 120, 12040, and it says that there's no judicial power to determine or interfere or mon modify a patent. Then you start seeing the separation and division and the prohibition against government in the statutes. Until you see that, you think these people have all this power. But so the... Here, within this case, they've, the court has taken some license on itself, created these scrutiny standards, and this case is important to understand what those scrutiny standards are and how the court applied an arm, what the dissenting judge says is an armchair interpretation, which brings it way down below what regulatory authority would be as applied to a constitutional provision. And I, it's important to watch how these deceivers do this to us. Because if you see it, then you can, in your paperwork, you protect against their ability to do this. So I keep saying about making your record correctly. It's the thing you'll never understand unless you start doing it and watch it happen against you. Once you have a record, you say, oh, but they did it against you and I'm defeated. No, once they do it like that, now you still have standing to go in and correct that. See, but you, And now you see it and you get to correct it. So everyone that is hands off and I don't do much or I just talk or whatever, you're not getting what I'm saying at all. And yet, you, those of you that jump in, you see how that works. You, you may send me an email. I show you, well, this is how they did it. Oh, yeah, that's right. And so you send in another document and you close that little rat hole they chewed in the box to get themselves to run. But here's the scrutinies. And you got to keep some of this stuff in mind and listen to the principles of it. And maybe a lot of you turned off just now, but this is really important. This is how they're defeating us, is in, in either you turn saying that wasn't important, or you're listening somewhere else, or you take a contrary opinion, or you say, what the heck? What the heck is the ring in your nose, and they're going to send you to the water, and they're going to drown you, because you ain't going to drink their water. They're going to drown you with the ring in your nose. And that was done by your silence and your lack of understanding of how they've set the system up to defeat us. And what I'm asking you is understand these little things. And so you, when you walk into the condition, you defeat these ahead of time. And when, now when I say that, when you say it's defeated, you don't have that battle to fight, do you? And that's another thing that escapes people who may object to what I've been saying, or even have an inert, inert, a neutral decision about what I'm saying, or have no, no, no thought about it whatsoever. But let me read the scrutiny standards for the level of application that they make these decisions. Some of this I completely would say, yes, that's a way to do it. You have to have some of these standards. When you read deeply enough, you start saying, okay, they do need to make these standards relative to certain things. On the other hand, I'm looking at some of these things saying, wait a minute now, if there's a, ju if there's a prohibition, what do you even, you don't have jurisdiction, no different than the statute says that you can't interfere with a patent. These are grants. These are the, with the holding of grants. The, the court, the judiciary has no interpretation power there. And so the only thing I can see the distinction is when you walk in and you make a question regarding the imposition of that or the application of that or the general application. And they get you not on the law, but they get you on the technical procedures and that's how they defeat us and so I go I'll remind you again why you write a paper within your rights that you've clearly identified by black and white words or titles or documents that no one can answer to interfere with otherwise that becomes the felony I keep talking to you about and now you have a case that goes into default and the judge doesn't the judge that's supposed to oversee it whether or not there's a jurisdiction in that court over that case because they're taking it illegally they don't have a way to say anything about it. And when they do, they become an accomplice. And in equity, that becomes one of their, that's a liability, it's strict liability to them. 
Now, I said a whole lot real fast there. For those of you that re-listen to me, maybe go back. Think about, I know I, I don't even know what, how to slow this down. It just starts coming out again. Just listen to what I'm saying there. Just how this is starting to work, how I, I'm working with it, how it look, how it works, how it uh, goes on. And then we run up against the problem of the, we find out those in the seats of decision are criminals. And you say, well, what are you going to do with that? Well, uh, I need more of y'all, folks. That's the whole point. Look at what France is doing. We can do it like France, or we can do it like what I'm saying. So we all just have awareness as a people that there's something wrong, and we go do the writings, and we say, listen, here's where you have it. You need to be gone out of your office, and let the system take care of that. I have evidence right now that I can't yet prove, and this is why I say this is the other problem. The paperwork that I write anymore, people disappear out of offices. I'm not disappearing them. I just set up a record that they they think they're really smart, and I'm just not, okay, I, I go back to the authorities and I say, okay, the authorities are the black and white. And I say, well, you just said something that's totally outside of the authorities. And you know that you build up a record of that, and pretty soon these people are gone. That may, that, that's a start, folks. Maybe, maybe some of you don't believe that, but that's a start. Oh, yeah, they'll replace it with somebody else, but... We see some of the people that are being replaced with, they are also people that have a different standard, I notice. And they're watching. They're watching how the problem is developing. They're watching people figure it out. And so, again, subtleties that most of you all may not ever get to because you never wrote that first letter and never made something important enough just to put yourself back in, into, the, into the game, interfering with the oppressor. I, so part of me says... Would, I just want to see the look on their face when I catch them. Whether or not it ends up meaning anything, I want to imagine the look on their face when the, the trap is sprung on their own actions, that they're a criminal. And the only, and it may be right now because there's not enough of us, the only proof I have is the office official that does that disappears from the office after a while. You're communicating with somebody new. Now, it's a different type of problem, but it can be addressed. I mean, that's just a matter of bringing your record together on the new one and saying, okay, do you want to do the same thing? But anyway, get down to the scrutiny. Uh, the scrutiny is an, an, a, a level of understanding, and I think this is a backwards proof that the dissenting judge shows us, of how uh, two people in the Bar Association uh, who have that association's options uh, agenda more prevalent than the neutrality and independence that they talk about for the law, I think this, this, this dissenting judge shows us at least two out of three judges uh, are, 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 are criminals, and one, you, you can get a bar member that would look at the law. This is the other thing about this. But he's showing us how backdoor they're eliminating your constitutional rights administratively in the administration of the decision of the case. And I bring this up um, because you have to understand this condition is here. And here's the point. It's a little bit to... A little bit to grab and understand, but once you get that, see, I already know this is here, so I've learned over time to write my papers or my comment or my, well, even just a simple letter, uh, directing a, directing someone who has an authority who failed and it was in derelict of their duty to do something that harmed me. I eliminate the scrutiny standards by prove, making sure my case is water or airtight. If I'm a frog, it's watertight. You build these in your, into your writings. You just learn about them. You don't tell them how much you know. You just build in the obstructions within the do document that don't allow them to get to this point. This is the loopholes that they've built in the system that we don't understand. And that goes for your code enforcement. That goes for your taxes. That goes for the status of your properties that are not supposed to be what they are, but people think they're supposed to. It goes for, like, this new thing in Minnesota. With, I don't know, this barrier thing around the ditches. They were sneaking up on everybody the whole entire time. And it's a federal imposition, and no one catches that. They do this everywhere. Again, 2013, we sued Grant Stream Funding, the method by alternative dispute resolution, from and through the EPA, which we didn't sue. We didn't have to because equity allows us to go after anybody aiding and abetting those that are harming us. Isn't that slick? I get to hit people that I can't even come into the lawsuit if I perfect a connection in the lawsuit over somebody else. If you start understanding this billiard game... I think will become a lot more effective. And it'll be just a matter of time before enough of us are just outing these criminals and before they just start disappearing from offices and other people replace it and they have the awareness that they now are up against people that actually do know what's going on. 
instead of all the excuses I hear right now. Uh, it's not looking good. That uh, I mean, I understand it's not looking good. The effect on it doesn't look good, but I'm seeing that the foundation is being built right. As, as stealthily as they've built this cage around us, we're building a foundation, the foundation that we should have had instead of the sand that they put their cage on. They built the house of cards, and, we, and we're living in that house of cards. And what we're doing is we're starting to we're starting to get more and more fans turned on to blow that house of cards down. If I can make that other analogy, I'm looking for something to to tell you folks about how this is a just an analogy. I mean, we just need another fan on on the house of cards. We don't know when that last straw will break the camel's back. When that last burst of wind will blow that house of cards down completely. It may take a hundred monkeys doing it. I don't know. And won't you be the fascinating uh, Shakespearean hundred monkeys to do it? I mean, finally punching on keyboards until you finally got it right. But the st strict scrutiny here, uh, this is an, ex an explanation of the standards that you'll be up against when you're looking at writing for somebody, uh, to somebody. And this is a descending judge discussing uh, how this one court case against your rights, uh, your rights, uh, your, 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 what you all think is a right, uh, an untouchable right of a right to bear arms. These people are after it. They've been after it. It didn't happen. It didn't stop because of Trump. In fact, the one guy, I guess they said that because this this one the dissenting judge was put in there by Trump, it shows the distinction between philosophies, which you now prove by that statement that these judiciaries are not independent of their political philosophies, and they were supposed to be independent of everything to be able to administer law. Here's that, That's evidence alone that your system is not working. And for those of you that would want to, I'd be attacking something based on that premise all by itself. Forget the Second Amendment. But here's the scrutiny, the scrutiny levels over how they address, how they address this. Strict scrutiny is the highest level of protection reserved for fundamental constitutional rights. To pass this level of legal examination, a law, regulation, or other restriction of a constitutional right must be required by a compelling state interest, and the restriction must be narrowly tailored to achieve that result. The burden of proof is on the government. So let me interject here again. You see, it's narrowly tailored. It's, it's a, a state interest. This is why they went to national security. So don't underestimate what they're saying there, and that this is still under attack at this level of scrutiny on a, on a fundamental right. And so you have to have you have to answer to the state interest, which might be the most egregious against you, which would be national security, which I'm telling you is on. You tell you just heard a story coming out of the New York Times. You're in a permanent state of war. Of anything they said America changed, it was because we went from a non-permanent state to a permanent state. If the Libra Code uh, occupation wasn't enough, you went from occupation to war. That's why I said you all were enemy combatants for a reason. It's all written down if you just go read it. But let me go back to these standards. So the burden of proof is on the government. This is critical to understand because this is what this court did in this case. The court made armchair, as we hear from the dissenting decisions, which is opinion. And they flip, effectively flip the burden back to the people who are trying to defend themselves against the government who has, was supposed to maintain the burden in this. So it's very critical to understand how this works. And when you understand this gymnastics, you can shut it all down and it won't affect you. Until you do, you will be subject to this nonsense. And I guess that's what I, I keep coming back to. I start writing paper or a comment or something that needs to go in that's important, and I write it in a certain way. I take all this into account, and we get no response. Because if they respond and they want to continue their agenda, they'll be the felons, I keep telling you, or committing treason, or derelict of breach of duty up front on maintaining the objective ob obligations and duties of government, which don't seem to be in play, but they seem to be in play when I write a better paper. And I'm asking you to learn these to be a better, uh, more formidable response to this, first of all, the insanity, first of all, and secondly, the lawlessness that comes under color of law. It's only legal, and this is how they're also taking this out. So understand the limitation on strict scrutiny. It is by the compelling state interest, which you need to defeat, and that's why I say bring the national security into a fraud or a pretense or pretext, and then make sure the burden stays on the government. As I've told you, it's all about maintaining or flipping burdens. This is all that I talked about. A quo warrant tow does what? It asks for the warrant that someone's operating officially. Who has the burden? The official. 
Don't let them not answer or try to flip it onto you. If they do, they fail. Don't get into an argument when they fail. Just tell them, out them for the fact that they failed, and that was their duty, That's all, their obligation. The, the burden was on them. It's done. See, there's no fight now, is there? And it's because you know the basic rules. And I know I see so many people that don't even uh, do that. And I don't. I can't tell you I know them to the to their their vast extents and how they're applied. I only know them to the extent that I've been able to use them myself. But I know them. I know some. I know handfuls of them. I know how I get into. I make sure I, I play within my realm of understanding within them too. I may be missing some that uh, some of y'all that start reading will find. That's why I say, I'll set you on the path. I'll say, here's your path, but you're going to come back. You may have a report that said, did you, you know, did you see this? And I'll go, I may look at it and say, oh, no, I didn't see that. Like the mission, the Minnesota folk, uh, the Minnesota um, listener that uh, had some property there and told me about elodial. Did you know that they speak, they use the word elodial in the United States of America? Well, no, I didn't. Well, let's, let's adjust my understanding now. Very cool. That's very powerful knowledge I didn't have before. Because let's back that off. Back that up a bit. Elodial titles recognized where courts have said they don't recognize Elodial? How did the state recognize it then? Unless it had its own power and then you're on what? Everyone, every state comes in on an equal ba equal footing, don't they? So, those of you not in Minnesota, you can back into that Minnesota law by the sister state point. And so you open yourself doors that are going to be denied by the people that want to deny your property, which are the attorneys, the attorneys. I'm not sure if it was the same state. I was looking at a website. Excuse me for not remembering, because I just read it here last week. I think I told you about it. An attorney saying the patents had no power. But if that's the case, why do we have Elodio being a constitutional power in Minnesota, and then over in Oregon it says the just judicial department had, cannot interfere with a patent? I wouldn't approach that as a question. I would just say these attorneys, these attorneys, are wrong. They're doing this in order to put a scare in you so that you go to them and pay the money to defeat you. Going on here, for example, based on the strict scrutiny, scrutiny that is required by uh, that this, that's on the government to prove a compelling interest on, on a narrowly tailored imposition. Now, for example, there is a general prohibition on shouting fire in a crowded theater when there is no fire. This is a restriction on the First Amendment right of freedom of speech. The prohibition serves as a compelling straight interest of public safety. The restriction is narrowly tailored to ban shouting false information that causes severe direct physical harm to others. A corollary for the Second Amendment would be a general prohibition on firing a gun in a crowded theater when there is no reasonable deadly threat. And I have to appreciate this part of the contribution on this article because uh, it was explaining how it would apply in the con how a First Amendment uh, prohibition would reasonably apply to a Second Amendment prohibition. And I think I think if you look at the test and the scrutiny and balance, you can agree that we shouldn't have people going into theaters and just shooting guns off. And so someone someone can't use the right of the Second Amendment in order to go do that. Otherwise, there's no there's no way to get an accountability, is there? And that's what I tell you. But the law is really an, an objective standard by which we would have accountability for those that become uh, those of us among us that just can't hold it together. Uh, at any rate, going on, uh, that was strict scrutiny, uh, intermediate scrutiny, the middle level of protection of less than fundamental rights. The law or regulation must serve an important governmental objective and be substantially related to achieving that objective. The burden of proof rests with the government. This level is fairly new, only existing since 1976. To have a little bit different standard, they're giving a little bit more uh, scrutiny adjustments, uh, but the burden doesn't shift. Look very carefully at that. This is what the, the, the dissenting judge in this case is saying. The decision that was made by these two judges that agree to essentially tie a knot in a barrel your gun is shifting this burden requirement. What have I told you to do? You flip the burden off of you or you keep it on them. And this is all what this case is about, even though it talks more, the headline is about the Second Amendment. So I guess I want again these 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 articles are instructive, maybe not necessarily in what most people will pick them up on, but when I'm asking you to take on the 
don't take on the whining part or the complaint part. You take on the remedy part. You look at these stories, these reports, these impositions, even those opinions in a, in, in a different light. And I hope you appreciate that through what I'm telling you, that there's a different way to look at some of this. And I hope that you then can learn it's important enough to start looking to apply and then learn how to do that. Whether that's on your own study or you, we get in conversation, you find people that you respect that, that uh, have that insight. I really don't care how that all comes out. Uh, just let's have it come out and so we get it working. Now, here's the last uh, basis, and this is the problem with the descending judge on this case and how a decision can flip the burdens without uh, really outside the law within what looks to be a lawful decision. The rational basis is the lowest level of protection, generally not applied to rights. It essentially is no protection at all. The party challenging the law or rule has the burden. We repeat that. Here's the rational basis, the rational basis test. It shifts the burden. And think about how you would do this as I read the rest of this. It shifts the burden to you if you assert this, and they, they, and the court picks it up and determines it by this basis, that the party challenging the law or rule has the burden. They have to show the government has no legitimate interest in the rule, the law, or the policy. They have to show that there is no conceivable rational basis for the law, even if the government never stated one. Laws, rules, or policies are almost never struck down on this basis. And so this is what this case does. If you look and read the case and analyze it, not about your right to bear arms and how that's being infringed and these two, two judicial bastages in the office are tarricking it. No, look on how they're taking you down. And Understand it, and you can. I think you can stop it. You at least begin to understand the attack. And you, I, I have done in this case. You take away that standard because you don't allow it to come down to a place where you haven't stated that they don't have a legitimate interest. In other words, you say there's a pat. When I go to grant law, there's no legitimate interest nor a right in a state to interfere with a patent by grant law. And so any rule, law, or policy that comes against it is improper, even at the rational basis test. And so you, if you just heard what I did there, that's what I'm telling you to do on your comments. I know it's going to take a little bit to figure out, but again, we're around. We're here to come tell you. The words are out there. It's out there, folks. Just go find it and just start asserting it. It, this is, but if you see how they're doing this to us, you see the st how they set up these grades of uh, of gray. You learn to to jump all of them, and you will be much better prepared in what you do. And uh, I've just found, folks, when I go and I start to apply this, do I do that a hundred percent? Not necessarily. Sometimes we get a a little bit short. They'll tell you, and then you just fix that. That's the other point about this. But you get and you leapfrog all of this because you got an airtight, you little frog, you got an airtight case. So you don't have to suffer the scrutiny standards. You don't have to suffer what, like this Second Amendment where they've taken this and they've flipped the burden when that ought not to have happened by a utility within the rule standards that is really also a violation as well. Understand that they invented the intermediate one back in 1976. Has that been fully tested? I kind of doubt it. And so even that's testable, but we're not talking on particular. So, and I really can't talk, we really can't talk and look at it w without a particular. Like all these, see for me, the, all the land cases are very particular. My response to the Minnesota uh, easement setback, whatever they want to do for the ditches in the, in the, in the ground, I can't remember, there's a, there's a term for it, it's not coming to me. That that was you have to look at each landowner. In other words, they couldn't. The fact that they made a they made a ma big law to encompass all landowners underneath the need underneath the Clean Water Act, see that's the Federal Commerce Act, tells me there's a problem and tells me they did it wrong, because each landowner has their rights. They couldn't make a blanket issue. So right off the bat, I know there's a problem. And then you go look and you see Grant Street funding, and I know exactly without even knowing more. I didn't even find the evidence, but I'm, uh, 
I don't know what I'd stake on it. It's just the way it would work. That you will find that there was an ADR, an alternative dispute resolution process, a consensus process that defeated or allowed defeated the, the landowner's rights, uh, you know, in in, in print uh, to get that in, and the landowners were again the victims of the stakeholders. Because I've been talking to you all all the time about this stuff. So we have these standards. We have standards to apply. I think under, you don't apply them. You make sure that they can't be applied as your objective, and then you're sitting a lot better. Now I say then you apply before that you're sitting in the necessity of uh, this war. You have to defeat that. These levels are very high. They've, they've set a real high uh, obstacle to overcome even with these standards. But if I've showed you before and I've explained, even Libra Code uh, speaks to property rights and compensation. And even uh, admiralty and international law speaks to neutrality and uh, what the uh, king, what the uh, ruler is uh, to do in that regard. And they and the internationally, you better, uh, uh, otherwise you you don't have what Russia has in the Kirsch instance. And they they found out real quickly that Ukraine the Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian navy and the tugboat uh, were violating international law of admiralty and maritime. Very fast, they found out. See, you have objective basis to get the do-gooder and to find out the do-gooder and, and keep it from getting in real gray. And there's a protocol to go through, and I guess that's what I'm saying. We're living in a world that has protocols. We'd be best to be identifying what those are and do what we can within our understanding set. But better, we learn better and we do better. Like I say, understand these, these standards, and then you don't talk about how much you know about it. You just leapfrog them. And you don't allow them to be applied. And when they are on your case, then you have, you've caught someone under color of authority trying to interfere with objective basis in law or your property rights, if I go there, because that's what I'd like to just focus on because it makes it easier uh, to, I, I believe it makes it easier to understand when you're dealing with something tangible and, and, and not something in, and see, they, they get the standards when they deal in the intangible because they're making it up, right? So, I'm trying to show us, I'm explaining it through the news that we have today, how is it that they, uh, we kind of d defeat ourselves by not understanding what the standards are to meet? And I'm saying you, once you understand those, you can best them depending on, and it only depends on whether or not your objective basis is strong enough. Now, in other words, you, you might want to be testing the waters. I'm not talking about those issues. I'm talking about where we have some evidence of uh, black and white, yes or no evidence of certain things. And somebody's coming with a black and white, essentially failure to be have warrant without a warrant to interfere with you. And that little that little frame uh, framework can be applied to many many issues actually. And that, that's really how I approach most of this. If someone comes to me with like let's say property taxes, I go, well, what are they? What's the basis of the tax? Well, you go to any statute, they'll tell you. So it's we know generally just for property taxes, it's ad valorem. You don't even know what, do you even know what that is? And how was that applied to a patent land? I would have to tell you that everywhere I look, it's been fraudulently applied. That's your first letter. And it may be a first question. Where the patent is uh, exclusive to me and against all the world, how did you have the right to assess my property as a ad valorem? Where's that right in you? How was that not a breach of the state to recognize the and protect my property against such an attachment? That would be at least the first question I'd have if I didn't go a different way. There's a couple of different ways to go on that, but I just want to bring this into the, the point of how you address it, even if you don't really know, but you have an idea. Did I speak too fast for some people there? Did I use some terms that are unfamiliar? If you're a property owner and I spoke too fast with terms you didn't know, you need to step back from the keyboard and uh, from the chats and the Twitter, and you need to go research what I'm talking about so that you have a better chance to understand what's happening to your properties. Okay, statute doesn't mean law. It means statute. And so, you, you have a hierarchy of authorities. If it's not a question, if they had no right to attach ad valorem valuation on commerce side market, and that the judiciary doesn't have an authority in order to interfere with a the patent, then what's the authority of the state to interfere? And isn't the act alone already a, fra a crime? Uh, if I've talked too fast, you need to go research those points. And I think you'll find out, and you'll have to start to become into the agreement 
yes, you're looking at a facial crime right off the bat. Does anybody uh, talk about this? Not many. I don't know of every. I don't know everything out there, but I don't hear anybody talking about this stuff. Now that's just talking. Now what about doing? Yeah, I, I know at least one that does that stuff. Then what do we get? We start outing the criminals in the system. That's a different problem, and it takes a little bit more time. And you go, oh well, I'll throw your hands up. Well, then what use is it? That's the point. That's what they want you to do. What the use is is eventually you get rid of those people. I don't know the future on what gets replaced. I just know those people that are harming you, and I can guarantee you they're harming lots of other people, are gone. Until more and more people come on to how this works. Because eventually we get into enough of our, the prairie dogs, they'll be, looking, they'll be looking ahead of time. They won't be walking and blundering into the problems as we see them. And then a lot of this will start to uh, get back. I mean, again, they, they talk about the pendulum swing. It has to do with people's ignorance and, it's their, and their willingness to to stop the crime against them and anybody else that they see. I really do appreciate the equity mindset, if you will. It's, in, it's, it's intangible, but it's, it's seeking. You don't have a remedy unless it's, you, you can help others. Otherwise, it's a common law response. So you're really working in the greater good. And if you think of it from that perspective, I think you'll start to get a better mindset on how this, this approaches. In a way, you get away from what you think you know in the Constitution, and you're just working from f a found, provable, proven harms that someone did not have right to do in an official capacity. And you speak can speak a totally different way. And, and it's a more, I don't know if the word altruistic is, is there, but I, I can calm down. It's not an attack on me. I can actually look in someone else's problem and say, you know, because it, it's happening to me and I've outed it, I can help them. Let me, let me write my paper to help them, even though I'm really speaking about me. And it removes me. And that's the important part of what you're doing in the comments. You've got to remove you. You might speak from a passion. And you might have an emotion about it what drives it. But what you do is you resort to the black and white standard, which no one can deny and everybody can see. And speaking of see, and how technocracy is moving along, and how we got to be careful, and you want to talk about your Second Amendment right now, I keep telling you, maybe that's not the best way to go, notwithstanding what we have to do, what we have a right to do. I think Lincoln told us the outcome of that, and so we got to re maybe rethink this. It's not my my statement there is not 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 a hundred percent, but who knows? I, I do see a better way. I think that revolution of the revolution needs to be broke. The wheel needs to be broke. We need to go a little bit different way. Maybe example our future. We want to do it peacefully. To find the objective basis that no one can touch, and then we can out the criminals quick. But uh, those of you that want to go a different way, and you think that uh, you can do it by being crickets, uh, technology is coming on to see. Uh, behind the walls. We heard about this before, but they're getting even more uh, focused, and I always get a chuckle a little bit. It's, it's, uh, it's sad, but it's a chuckle nonetheless. Uh, how they're using this phone, I keep telling you, this this, this weapon against you. Uh, technology coming out, they want to see, you want to see how to do this. Here's how they, they're going to see you. You want to see how they're, how they're doing it against you. Well, they're going to see you first if you don't get to going, and you think you're a cricket can hide using your little phone. Uh, you're going to be tapped into the world of things. Uh, using Wi-Fi to see behind closed doors is easier than anyone thought. Uh, my whole point on all this, I don't even want to read the story. You can go find the story. You can read it. You can see how they're doing it. Uh, I told you, actually, that they would be able to do this. I talked to you about traveling across the intersection and being droned if you didn't have money in your account to pay the traffic ticket because you blew the yellow light. They say it was red. And the, and the receipt you're going to get, unless you get that, uh, that, that uh, the, they find out your bank account, your social credit wasn't such that you deserve more than the hellfire that will come from the drone that identified you from that phone and your location. Here's the Wi-Fi from behind closed doors. They can pick you up because of where your phone is and the sound emanation or the uh, frequency emanations and how they measure it. And they use your phone, this device they've given you to buy into, this leash, this prison guard, this surveillance device. They're now telling us they can actually track you down inside your home with it. And they can use the interference that you have with that signal coming out of that phone, your interference pattern that you create with that, to find you. I think the technology is fascinating, but if you think that this little phone is, is uh, something that you can benefit quicker and better by and into the future, I think you need to reassess that. Otherwise, you know, we do have the, we do have a, it is a, a like I said, everything can be used for good. It seems to be used for them. And we got to assess that. 
Uh, so Wi-Fi fills our world with radio waves in your home, in your office, increasingly at city levels, increasingly at city levels, in smart cities, increasingly in city levels. Now they're talking about your phone. When those antennas go out, they can take your the anomaly you create in the force in the field of emanation, and they can find you as well. Remember, we heard that we also heard there's an emanation that you put out that has a signature that they can identify. So when that modulates that deformation, they'll identify you. If you think this is getting gets too sci-fi, you wait, folks. It's not. We already know this stuff. It just takes a while to get implemented. I watch this stuff and just say, wow, look what they're doing. Isn't this fascinating? But wow, look at the surveillance cage that they have on us already. And they're making more points with the 5G and all this. It starts to build into this. Uh, why, uh, so Wi-Fi fills the world of airways in the cities. Humans are bathed in a constant background field uh, that uh, 2.4 to 5 gigahertz radio signals. Is, and when people move, they distort this field, reflecting and refracting the waves as they go. That's given more than one group of re more than one group more than one group of researchers, folks. More than one. An interesting idea. How many groups of people you got working for you, folks? In theory, they say it ought to be possible to use this changing electromagnetic field to work out the positions, actions, and movements of individuals. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Several groups have created imag imaging systems that use Wi-Fi to see through walls. They talk about a drawback. The see-through wall technology worked on a problem of not having an internal device to measure uh, a distortion field. Your phone provides that distortion field. I suppose any Internet of Things device that goes Wi-Fi prov pro now provides that distortion field where you are, inside the walls. And so... Here, I'll just stop right there. They are using you don't you think you got to get it, have to get a Roomba to now go third party to map out your house. They can do that, or they can now use the Internet of Things. They can use the distortion fields. I'm, I'm trying to think. Was there a Star Trek that showed how they did? They could see that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The Terminator was that that field that it was distorting. That's kind of like what's doing it, but they do it electronically. Is that unknown to me? Absolutely not. That's what we studied. I studied in R&D when we were doing pay, uh, programmable pacemakers. We had to look at that uh, that anomaly. Not that we looked at images. We had to look at anomalies in the field. and You have to look at concentrations and diffractions, and you have to worry about possibly things coming into them. It ended up being not so big a deal, but you have to still look at it. it it's, anyway, fascinating, fascinating stuff. They can now see you. Because of what? Because of field emanating device, RF, RF emanating devices in your house and the distortion field you place in the environment. So they've solved their problem, folks, and you did it. You plugged in. You think that phone's nothing but uh, well, I get to text to somebody? I'm telling you, folks, stop type, type. Stop typing and texting and start writing letters. You better go against some of this stuff. You better see where the technology is going. For, uh, watch, be careful with what they do with the left hand. The, left, the right hand's not coming to slap you up beside your head. And this Internet of Things, and uh, they see, they can see what's going on. They control how this is working. They control the field you're walking through. Are you in control of that field then? No, they are. You're controlling the life that they've now built up for you? No, they are. Now, what happens when that field's distorted enough at their end? Uh, well, well, we hear it this week. Wells Fargo computer glitched and blamed as hundreds lose their homes. Wells Fargo has revealed a computer glitch in the matrix, folks. Is behind an error that led to more than 500 customers losing their homes when their loans were refused. Let's bring it more real time. Well, this is when the time when the bubble is going to break again after 2008. No one learned, right? This is how we do this, folks. Let's put it more real time. Your social credit has a glitch. Your wallet has a glitch in your wallet, but we don't know because if there was a computer glitch. You didn't just lose your home from a loan that you couldn't get into. You lost your home you were living in. You lost your electric. You lost your power. You lost your food. Oh, you better have. You got a little bit, and they told you to have three days' worth. You have that because you listen to the government. But you lost everything on a computer glitch in the future, folks. Why? Because they figured out you were meeting with some people that this 5G radiation deformation, diffraction energy, they put you all together and they said, oh, these people are, are, are three in a crowd. They're, they're, they're enemy combatants that are coming against us. We need to, we need to control that. 
But we already hear this happening in China. Anybody who st speaks out against the Chinese government is completely shut out. I'm showing you that there's a glitch. They call an error. No one is going to get, no one is going to see a problem on this because it's just an error, folks. I'm suggesting to you in the technocratic war against you and the future coming on the silent weapons that you bring in, that you buy into, that you pay for, these are the weapons against you. We see the computer glitch now that will not just be on home loans, which will be available to the system uh, on every aspect of your life. Everything. And another, find it fascinating to me, another story comes up to regurgitate what we found out in the 90s. It was actually from before we I even got here looking at this closer. It's coming out again to tell us. I find it fascinating. These people, I don't know where they, who these people are that have such a following that they now are the 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 seers of the of the future, uh, stating for us again. Uh, this is all how, the only thing I'll use for it. The elite are creating an authoritarian beast system, and uh, those uh, that dissent uh, could lose everything. Okay, how long have you been hearing that behind the woodshed, folks? Oh, here we got some. If you didn't believe me, someone else sees it too. Although this is information, the so-called beast system has been known for a long, long time, and well outside of the internet, and well outside of of uh, patriot circles and it's become a, a knowledge that uh, we've been watching happen and that's the problem we keep watching and they what me time is you know that watch it comes uh, it might be broke but it comes right every twice a day don't it well, we're right twice a day but see this whole thing keeps going because we just keep watching the B system is now coming back in the news someone else sees it uh, I guess for them it's the first notice it's it's what I've recognized. You call it the beast system. It, it, we can give it by any name. Remember, Mark on the Beast at protonmail.com is how you get a hold of me. Mark on the Beast. It's funny what one little letter makes there, doesn't it? On or of. On or of. The war on terror or the war of terror. The Mark of the Beast or the mark on the beast. Which one do you want to be wielding? The one that comes to you or the one that goes back out? The beast system, folks. People are recognizing it. It's here. Uh, those that dissent could lose everything. Someone's finally coming on to what we've been saying here behind the woodshed. What Those of you that have been watching, watch. But that said, our problem is we're watching too much. We're watching way too much. And some of the chat time we spend or some whatever, the communications we spend, we could spend in just a few minutes authoring a nice letter that actually addresses something after we get a little bit of knowledge of it. You could be interfering. You make your own proper interference pattern before the implementation of this nonsense to stop it. And your silence will bring it on. And some of you say, well, we don't care. Uh, it's, I'm not, I don't do much. I don't do anything. It's not going to be up to you folks. So here, let's move on with the, the technocratic war against us. Uh, as I was telling you, these uh, problems with big data will probably be more likely dangerous than, than the government, although they're, uh, the government sits there uh, helping it. And then it's a synergistic effect. We have now Microsoft and MasterCard. MasterCard. Who has that card? Not you. You're not the master. You're a debt slave. You're sustainably debtable. That's what the Agenda 2030 is. Here's Microsoft and MasterCard working on a universal online identification standard. It's like my worst dystopian nightmare is coming uh, to fruition right before my face, folks. I've been telling you, <laughs> I'm not the only one, but I've been telling you not that this is coming, but how? And here it is. I just said last week this was what's happening. Now here's the official news. I, again, I can't come almost fast enough. There's so much to talk about. I can't come fast enough with the explanation right before. It's already happening to us now. Microsoft and MasterCard logos uh, near everyone has the issue has, has has the issue of managing their digital identities, including multiple passwords, two-factor identification, and other hurdles, proving themselves who the, proving themselves who they purport to be. Microsoft and MasterCard solution. For outcomes, remember, this is ADR process consensus right here in your face. Microsoft and MasterCard's solution, the invented, the invented harm is this uh, problem of the digital world. 
that's the fiction that they're trying to have a solution. This is the outcome to that. This is the synthesis to that, to the uh, to the thesis that they created the antithesis to create the uh, synthesis for. Right back around. This is all what it's about. Microsoft and uh, Mastercard solution is one of many working on this problem. Many working on this problem. Many working on this problem while you sleep, folks. The two companies haven't shared much in the way of details as yet. But Microsoft and MasterCard both highlighted the benefits of digital identity solution would bring such as working instantaneously and securely. They're talking globally here, folks. I'll get to the chase. Microsoft will give uh, now. Globally, this is their technology, working with MasterCard. The master's card is not yours. You're a debt slave. Keep bringing it up. It's all technocracy. It's all using these phones. You're going to have one identity. What have I been saying? What they, what I said that China was showing us, social credit. It's all right here. And what are these? What is Microsoft then going to do? The same week, it tells us exactly what this is. If it doesn't bring us back to the permanent war against us, you're an enemy combatant. Lieber code, Lincoln, an ongoing occupation, and they have your number, and you're supposed to have theirs. Microsoft will give U.S. military access to all the technology we create. Can I drop the mic? Please? Isn't that enough? Microsoft will give a U.S. military access to all the technology we create. And the story I read before that is that Microsoft and Master's Card, the Master's Card, and this is it's not just Master's Card, it's that whole debt system, the beast system, it's going to give all that technology to the military. Why? Unless it's what I've been saying, folks. And so you can continue to plug in. You can continue registering with these people. You continue to make an identity that they're going to conform into their blockchain technology, folks. Master chain. Can I, I can just see it now. That's the new system that Microsoft will be running with MasterCard. It'll be master chain. I can't wait to see the the, 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 the blockchain people jump on that. Master chain. Those are the greatest things since sliced white bread. Since refrigeration. Master chain. You globally, wherever you go on the globe, what's in your wallet? Well, I don't know. We had a computer computer glitch. Well, from who? Well, the military decided I was a threat. Who cared? They didn't tell me that, actually. I just surmised because all of a sudden my stuff was gone, and there was no uh, fingerprint and a smiling face from a hacker who had an ego drive that, that wanted to who wanted to uh, let me impress me with his prowess. No, I got no social credit, I got no food, I got no house, I got no loans, I got no trip. I can't go down the road, I can't do nothing. Because the military said I was a threat. Where'd that come from? Well, that happened when America changed in, 20, uh, uh, in September 11, 2001, and then shortly thereafter the P-A-T-I-R-O-T Act, for those patriots out there who think that meant you. And, and you didn't notice that when you weren't stepping up against that, that you weren't. Okay, I just lost another 15 ear holes. That's only seven and a half of you. There's not enough of us folks understanding this whole condition. I don't know. I mean, like I said, can I just stop talking? It, you hear, hear it right here. Your technocrats are making a, an identity that they're going to hand to the military. What else do I need to say? And you say, but I don't do any good. Well, here, I keep telling you what happens. I don't do anything bad. Excuse me. I'm not a bad guy. I'm not a bad gal. I don't do anything wrong. Lawsuit. Boston PD's gang database says people who wear Nikes and have been beat up by gang members are gang associates. And then the first paragraph references the Chinese government. What have I told you before? It has nothing to do with what you think about yourself. It's what the guy who's got the gal that's on the computer the technocrat, the bureaucrat that has the power to determine you to be a problem has nothing to do with you feeling feeling about what you feel about it or what you do. They are going to make the definition of your subject status, which is already predicted. It's already been named. You're an enemy combatant. All they got to do is find something to connect you up with. It used to be a misdemeanor. That was right out of the Patriot Act. Everyone said, oh, great, we're going to fight crime. No, no one understands this stuff. You are the criminal already. How many times do they keep telling us at that time, oh, you're going to commit three felonies a day? Well, they were telling you you're an enemy combatant that's subject to this women caprice of a Boston PD's 
decision that if you even walk by a gang member, you can be considered a gang associate, and you're going to be put on some scale, some social scale of how they're going to deal with you. And it's completely outside of your determination. How many stories have we been hearing about that? Here it is, folks, right here, folks, right here in the same week. Microsoft and Master Chain is going to make up a leash for you. You're with your phone. They're going to be able to identify wherever you are, the anomalies in the force. You're talking there's, a, there's a, an anomaly in the force. There's a, a weakness in the force. Yeah, it's you. They're going to identify where that is. They're going to identify you, and they're going to say, oh, he's next to that other anomaly, and that must mean he's associated with that criminal, that gang member. And now that other one may have just been an associate, and so now two associates get together, and you're both criminals. The Boston PD is already doing this. The Chinese government uses a number of measures to keep tabs on citizens. One is what's known as Citizen Score, a compilation of all the good, bad habits that the government can track that determines whether a person should be viewed as a contributor to society or someone the government should take out of circulation. Like all that cash you complain about, that fiat stuff. They're taking that right out, making your debt system, right? Sustainable debt, folks. UN A twenty thirty. I can't I don't know what else to say. Can I stop talking? No, we all say, Oh yeah, yeah, we know that. Well, go ahead, keep knowing it. Don't do nothing against it. Keep knowing it. Keep knowing it. We do the same thing here in the US. Credit scores determine who gives them to who gets to live where and what vehicle they can own. It's also uh can affect employment opportunities. This version of a citizen score is compiled by the private parties who have access to information Americans are given no choice in relinquishing. Well, cuz you gave it to them, folks. You voluntary you know, voluntary life, there it is. You're living in voluntarism. This is the double-edged sword of all what freedom is. But the government also uses point-based system to determine what kind of citizen you are. One of a good, okay guys, one of the good, okay guys, or possible, a possibly a menace to society. The ACLU, which is also not your friend, a bunch of lawyers, don't really do the right charges. Don't worry about it. They're just there making you understand that this is how it's coming down. and They're going to be there to support you, even though when you go ask them, they could care less about your real good issue. They're going to bring the one that brings the system on. Why? Because they're the bar association, right? Where appropriate. Where you go to them, they can take care of it. The ACLU is currently suing the, the Boston Police Department over its ad hoc citizen score. Why aren't they suing all the infrastructure that's bringing all this in, folks? Again, they do the effect. They don't go after the cause. I'm asking you to go for the cause. Get rid of their their need to be doing this and making themselves look like heroes. The uh, BPD adds and subtracts points to add and possibly subtract people from its gang database. Possibly. We don't know if they ever subtract anybody from the database. The Patriot Act says they don't. I don't know why these people say that they might. But that's what it says here in the story if we want to read it. The, the citizens act to, these things citizens actively do and even things they passively don't can put them on the watch list. So you passively don't is not you thinking that you're you're thinking you don't do anything is not and do anything wrong is not a protection. Just as what I've been just what I've been telling you for years now as this system rolls out in the notice to us today. Thanks to the ACLU suing to try and stop it and uh, really suing the effect and not the cause is my I can see. And this is how far down the the path is. So your, this is the new system. The, the Microsoft is going to hand uh, over to the military everything it creates. It's working with Master Chain in order to bring you all in, using your phone to identify where and how. And even if you don't even uh, tell them where you are, they're going to be able to use the anomaly in the field uh, to identify you and where. Now you're subject to this uh, this threat, the computer glitch that Wells Fargo can, can throw on you, Master Chain can throw out there, Microsoft can throw. You think you hate Windows 10 right now? Well, some of you love it, I'm sure. I don't know if you ever looked back in the preferences. I was 
I, I mean, I already understood what I was looking for with this uh, reporting back to home, phoning home. But when I looked at the preferences in Windows 10, I was I was still shocked. Page after page of things that are on by default that they're telling somebody else what's going on on your system. And then I'm realizing as I'm clicking them off and de-checking them and de-checking, I say, but the system, I can't tell that it's still not using it. And how do I know that? Because we already had the report that says they're using it even when you did you de-check it. And so sure enough, I go into services and I turn those, I check off those services and those services are still running. So, do you trust Windows 10? No, master chain's coming here, folks. It's going to be the blockchain for the globe. You're susceptible to that. You're at risk to it. You're at risk to the glitch in the matrix. And then you're also at risk to stuff like this. Man arrested for stealing $1 million from Silicon Valley exec via SIM swapping. Now, this is an interesting and different attack, but this is where the corporations could care less about your privacy or care to your accounts, and they hand someone, they let someone cajole them into giving your information to them, their card, uh, your the, your card to them so that they can access your wallet and steal it from you. Now, I'm telling you, okay, they catch somebody. I'm saying that that's the one they caught. This is just to tell you it can happen. This is another attack surface and a vulnerability to you in the cashless society, in the future uh, that they want, in the silent weapon or quiet war using a phone and what's in your wallet, in the master chain, in Microsoft working with the military, uh, under social credit and all this other stuff. All is out. You can be attacked by your the other crabs inside the bucket, folks. And here's the report that it's happening. It's doing it. They got caught. They went after Silicon Valley itself, which got me here. Uh, the Silicon Valley exec was attacked. The people that make this stuff was not protected from the company that he goes, the third-party company he goes to for his phone service. Someone created enough facts to convince some some someone in the in the office to hand them the SIM card uh, that wasn't theirs. You're vulnerable to this. And so keep plugging in, folks. Like, may, I, I, let me just offer it. I keep saying that, just like harping. Please look at an alternative way. I'd say step back about 40, 50 years. Start caring for each other. Start working with each other. Find alternative means of exchange. Find uh, to go back to barter if you have to, because that's where we're really gone, that they're shoving us into austerity. You might as well go back into something you can control. Uh, find mediums of exchange that work for you. Work locally with people and start to establish a nice, tight, knit groups of people that work together. Uh, because this is all your. If you don't observe what's happening, you're even in your innocence. You will be have some jerk who decides they don't like you and says you're some gang member. And we're not going to say, but wait a minute, you're the government gang. And they're going to say, yeah, we are, but it don't matter because we have national security. And then because your mind doesn't go past the cricket, you won't have a way to talk about that. You won't have a say. Next thing you know, you'd be like that guy in the, in France with the disabled and the being pulled out of his wheelchair. Next thing you see is that jackpot of global governance on your face, courtesy of Microsoft, Master Chain, and the military. I think that's the title of the broadcast. What do you think, Vinny? You write that down? But, yeah, I, I, do I, can I stop talking now yet, folks? I mean, isn't there enough here? Isn't there enough here that we can use? I mean, is, there, is it not enough? It's not enough what I've said to say uh, about what kind of mess we're in today. What we've allowed to come upon us the cage, the, ch the the prison that we've been we've allowed to be built up us and we've around us and we've said nothing about it. We said, well, let me ask, what have you said about it other than in a chat room? I'm talking about what have you done in a proper way to start to shut this down? Oh yeah, you're going to say, oh well, but then what can we do? Well, I don't know. You're not doing anything now, so what can you do? Your fear comes on you, doesn't it? We're told about all that. We're told exactly about the fear coming on us. We fear of paralysis. It comes on us. And all I'm asking us to do is to do what we can as we know and learn better as we go and put some time into the into ourselves, I suppose, because it ends up being time to our families and our sons and daughters and 
and, and, and everything else. And then we become the example of at least how we start to, to, to hit back. And it seems like it's not very much right now, but that's, that's just an appearance. Remember, what they're doing is all a fiction. And you are bringing it to life. It's, it, they call it virtual. I even despise the word virtual reality. It's not virtual. But that's what they get us to believe, and it doesn't exist. It's all it's all imaginary. But remember, the computer screens that you have, they're not really what you think they are. In fact, the technology that displays that to you isn't what you... It's not a picture. It's working on weaknesses. I don't know if it's a weakness. I guess there's a reason, a natural reason why we have certain, I said, blind spots. Uh, our our physiognom physiognomy works in a certain way, and technology exploits that. They know you better than yourself at some level. Sometimes it works for us, sometimes it doesn't. But the people that can do this work know this this technology better than you, and this is what they use against us. Again, there's other weaknesses built into how even a, a, monitor, a picture on a, on a monitor develops, or a TV screen. And within that weakness, in nature it's not a weakness, but it's a weakness within when someone has designs on you that has a technology to exploit that thing that you actually don't need. And so, we, and this is what we have, we're, we're, we're working these, uh, people are working, groups of people are working. Remember, always groups of researchers, groups of companies are working on all these things to interfere with your life at their uh, profit at to your expense. Again, your expense is that debt, sustainable debt that, that's been in the books coming on us. I've been talking about also how they're making you know this artificial thing that you, you they need to destroy the family. They've been doing they did a pretty good job of that. They need to destroy your sense of you as a gender. We talked about a little bit about the genderless thing last week in fiction is genderless, but you're not. And they're interfering with that in the people's minds. I've been looking out a little bit more. You know, young people really are messed up. I just don't even know. And I don't mean that as a, this is, there's a, it's sad. There's the peop, the young people are messed up. There's a physical thing that, that's a uh, overt thing like schooling that, that, that's causing it. But there's other things, the epigenetic problem. We are walking into that time when the younger younger people are going to have serious problems and issues. But there, there's a plan to do that so that you are, let's say, in the natural sense of men and women, you're more focused on what the hedonistic side, so that you don't like look down the road and say, "Wait a minute, I got to go in to do something responsible." That the part of that reason is for moving you into a place of incapacity. That again, the bureau rat, the governance can control, and it, because you're the enemy, they don't have any. You're the animal that they're managing. They don't care that you go into some sort of self-acting population control. What they want you to do is do that and be focused there, so that, that it leaves them open to be able to do things that they can program into the future for themselves. And we talked a little bit about some of these artificial means and the cells becoming organoid brains and all this and here's another story that I think is kind of like translating through that uh, moving this technocratic future into place uh, you know science would save us kind of thing and it doesn't best science is a fraud and now we see that because it's on an agenda underneath it it wasn't really meant for you but here was an interesting little story uh, I thought because it moved it talked a little bit about what we said about before Remember I was talking about the artificial wombs and I was talking about the organoid mind, the brains that have brain patterns that are developing brains. Uh, the, we talked a little bit about what would sound like sci-fi applications of that. Well, this little story came through. Baby born after first womb transplant from a dead donor. I don't know anything about this more than the story. Through the story I find out they have been doing womb transplants on uh, live from live people just recently, it's only been a few years old, they're now moving to try and get wombs from dead women in order to uh, create viable fetuses uh, and have babies born. They're finally taking a, 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 a uter, a womb from a dead woman, put in a young woman who had a baby. First one. And I was trying to figure out, well, how do they take them from live women? It sounded a little pretty, pretty barbaric. Well, apparently you can donate your womb uh, if you're a woman. 
And I found that fascinating. But more to the point of what I want to talk about here. This, uh, see, they had the artificial womb, and they're trying to get that working. They have now gone in very short time from live womb transplants to dead woman womb transplants with viable fetuses. That I think, and if I look to the story, they looks like they're understanding the function of the womb, uh, and, and not the room, Vin, the, the womb. Uh, the, the fact that they are moving it into being able to utilize a dead woman's womb implanted is getting an understanding. It's a special process they just developed. I think appears to say and suggest that they're moving into applying that technology to an artificial womb. Together with the the the, the, the recent story on that uh, on the genetic twins. So I think we're seeing maybe the the the, the, the development of where the system is going from making natural babies to artificial babies. And part of the way that they're going to be able to force people to do that as well, notwithstanding the confusion, gender confusion they create, which diminishes the population, and notwithstanding the genetics that they uh, they change outright uh, with, um, what should I say, the epigenetics that, that may alter that in the physical interaction mode. But they have the internal thing that's going on. We have another report, single missing gene leads to miscarriage. Uh, fascinating story to me. Just, I mean, I'm just, I can't even imagine even seeing this. But uh, th here, here it is: one single gene being incorrect will cause a miscarriage in a woman. A single gene in the mother plays a, such a crucial role in the development of placenta that its dysfunction leads to miscarriages. I'll stop right there. You can read the story. What if, just what if, uh, as they learn this, and I think they have, that they can figure out how to affect that gene in your vaccine interactions or anything else? What if just put it in vaccines? They don't know what this uh, CRISPR is doing, that it does uh, all this side uh, this collateral damage that they don't understand, that the FDA writes off. But what if they understand or they can see that this is a, this, this causes the, this gene manipulation can also cause this one gene. Think about this. One gene is enough to stop life from propagating. And here we got vaccines and genetic materials coming down the pike and CRISPR adjustments that they don't know the collateral damage to and the collateral offshoots uh, uh, happening that they're, uh, that they're causing to happen. What if they understand this? And they start making uh, interactions with the populations where one gene is altered that causes the future, your future son or daughter, to not to have just miscarriages. You're not going to have any children. And then that sets up a condition, folks. What if you, because you're going to have your natural needs, you're going to want to have sons and daughters. So, oh, and I'm all wanting to take care of other kids. Oh, well, what if I can pro provide you a synthetic womb? Because you're going to have a miscarriage even in your transplanted womb. Notwithstanding how we're going to find all these. They did the transplanted live ones from family members. It's like a, it's, it's an organ transplant uh, rejection problem. Now they can do it from a, from a dead woman, uh, and they can get, have a viable fetus. So what if they get to the point when they show you, show you that you're going to have a miscarriage anyway? How many women have I heard have miscarriages anymore? Totally, I mean, out of my mind, uh, out of my under awareness of happening before these last few ten years, how many women have miscarriages? Well, we might be seeing part of the problem. But what if they get it to the point where the majority of the of the population has miscarriages, and then they promote to you, well, we have an artificial womb, we can make an artificial baby, what do you want? And you get to care for the state's child, since they're called child anyway, and they're the state's ward. How about if we're going to give you a real one like this? Haven't I seen a movie like that, folks? And you're chosen to be able to take care of it as the custodian of the state's property, and it's really just a mod it's just a modified, uh, genetically modified human being, an animal that's doing and prepared to do a certain thing. Isn't that also this story that popped out? Chinese government says it shut down the controversial human gene editing project, and the reason why they did that, as we talked last week, because there was so much outrage. 
And yet I said, wait a minute, what, the, what was the outrage when they were, were doing CRISPR in gene modification of the plants we eat, knowing we have an epigenetic causation of uh, changing our whole life, uh, our, our gene structure? What about that epigenetic uh, CRISPR technology in vaccines, which are injected? Why, where were the co scientists then? That we were just being told that this is already on the books. They now claim the government, the Chinese government, this is the central hub to to uh, control of its populations through these uh, digital technology. I've been telling you this is coming. That this comes out of that area. This says the government shut it down, uh, shut down the controversial gene editing project, which means, given this is the truth, again, we don't know, but they have an artificial womb. They now get, an, uh, they now can use dead, uh, dead uh, women's wombs to, be, to make babies. They now translate the knowledge of how that happens to the artificial womb to get an artificial womb to function, to be able to take a cell that they've done this genetically modified uh, position for uh, with. And if I guess if my other thought was if they can do it from a dead woman, why don't they just give animate the plus the the animate the womb outside the dead woman's body? I mean that's all they have to learn to do, right? Even if they can't make a synthetic one. And so they're coming to terms with this. They're making humans, the animals, gene edited. This uh, the scientist was claiming that it was for a, a better purpose, so that the, uh, the twins wouldn't have AIDS, HIV, not AIDS, but HIV in the future. And we hear that the government shut that down, but then we also hear that the Chinese, uh, Chinese Frankenstein, became missing right after that, folks. Whereabouts of scientists who created gene-edited babies unknown. Now, before we go too far to the gene-edited babies, those have not been exposed either. It's kind of like the Khashoggi, no body, no case. However, given the stories are here, I think they're noticed to us. They're watching this dystopian view of techn the technocratic scientific condition happening uh, that the government who has license to do it under its interests, national security, and the people that are in their government to make those decisions have looked into the future and said, we're going to need certain types of people, and we need to control the, the population, the natural population of people, without them understanding how we're doing it. And we need to make them confused so that they don't get together to have uh, offspring, and those that don't, we then have to give them a way to have miscarriages, which means you're going to go through pain and suffering. Remember that. Uh, and we're going to prove that they can can't have uh, have uh, offspring, and so we're gonna uh, we're gonna condition them to come and ask us for the offspring. I think these stories are going on. The the scientist has disappeared. Who knows why? But we're not getting the rest of the story. I guess for my 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 point. And so we're back to this technocratic imposition where governments are, oh, well, we're going to have to show like we're, we're interested or not. But they were clueless to the fact that it's been going on. There's groups and groups working on this stuff, folks. I told you a long time ago, once they put the uh, the human on the on the table for this, on the test tube, they put the human inside the Petri dish. Watch out. This was it pretends the dystopian technocratic future that everyone looking at doesn't see. It's transparent. They just feel that their miscarriages must be them. It must be what they eat. It must be something other than actually it's been a plan in the system to be able to bring people into the world artificially that are more conducive to the future that's been the future we want, which is not people. It's those in the su sustainable realm. They're just psychopaths. They're, I see people trying to reason with them as well. Don't try to reason with these people. Don't try to reason, make reason for them. There is no reason. You're going to have to just step back and figure out the principle for yourself. And we're going to have to work from that, from each one of us. But we're not going to get it by the new fangled ideas. The new normal is exactly what they want us to agree to. They play on us. They 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 talk to uh, exploit our weaknesses. A woman will blame herself for her miscarriage. I just read you a report that one cell change, excuse me, one DNA piece of information is enough to cause that. And how many things have we mentioned that are epigenetic in their effect that could be the cause? How many people would, how many women would put that on themselves instead of saying, wait a minute now? I'm part of a bigger, I'm part of a bigger plan and it's not good. 
again, I mean, we could talk about even, I mean, I'm going to talk about it. We could offer these radio waves or, you know, no one's really wanting to look at that too much on the, on that kind of a, of a situation. I tell you that we are of evidence of binary weapons from the fifties. We use radio waves and viruses. What's the difference here that they use a virus that's preloaded with CRISPR to do some damage? We don't know. All you got to do is walk through the 5G field. And it triggers it. We've got the technology back in the 50s, folks. If go, Just go look at San Francisco. Go look it up. That's a binary weapon. I actually mentioned to you, I think I've seen trinary weapons. They require a combination of two things to be triggered by another thing. Fa fascinating what diabolical things that are being wielded for us. But why? You have to ask why. It can't be good. And yet you see these stories that all of a sudden artificial wombs are, are we looking for dead wombs for dead wombs? Oh, they say that they're going to give pe babies to people who can't have babies. Great, but look at what that leads us to down the road. Why is there an incidence increase in women who can't have babies that they're looking to transplant somebody else's uterus and womb? I guess womb is better. What is, what's going on that this is now a, a thing? is answered in the so-called science technology that's coming. I can't remember. I thought I, I thought I saw a movie. Uh, I can't remember the name. You will take care. You will be checked out like you do a dog. You'll be checked out for your fitness to be a parent, a custodian of the state's baby. And you will want that. And you will cherish it like your own. They might even have some of your genes that if they're the if they're workable. You're also going to have the class of mothers, wet mothers, that will be untouched. They need to sustain some genetic base. Haven't I? See, I don't see movies that much or recently that much, so I don't know. I get the sense we've already seen this in the movies. I don't know. So I don't feel too bad about getting too far beyond. We're, we're living the technocratic life right in our face. They're setting up the foundation. And we are sitting there silent, and they're taking that silence as your consent. I don't know what else to say about the problem. There, right there. I'm just adding more to say they have also put on us a certain requirement how we respond. You're not going to do it by talking about your constitutional rights. And yet, you will be enforcing those rights is the real interesting slip. You will be enforcing the rights you don't talk about by doing what I'm saying. If you don't, you're not. And it, and I can only tell you because you may or may not understand the system of how that was working. How that method is working is how they're doing it. So you have, again, it's, it's something silent and secret and transparent to most everyone. And all I can tell you is to have seen it was because of three decades of looking my eyes as wide open as I could be, trying to take everything in, putting things together in, in ways that not what I was told, but what the new the new normal was proving to me, as it was written down and shown, and not just that, but was acted upon by things that we call authority, which we now know as authorita. The type of authorita the French, I hope, are resisting openly in the yellow yellow vest, uh, yellow vest. I'm, again, I want to make sure that we should be attaching sustainable development, A2030, sustainable debt, to that carbon tax fraud onto that. I think we need to make sure it doesn't get lost what they're actually talking about. We're not talking about a 13 cent tax. We're talking about, as I said in a, I think I said in a, in an email, in a Twitter, it's a beachhead to start the process of sustainable debt austerity they've been living under. Now it's sustainable debt. It starts the process where they are now paying for the harm that's been blamed on them uh, for something that's a fraud called uh, global warming. And I, I, Kim.com said something to someone that it was a dummy to believe that, not believe the scientists that, 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 about the scientists who are promoting that and I uh, talking about that as a promotion. I went back and I asked them, I want you to research them that that term global warming is not is political. It's not science. You have to go back and do that. I hope he does. We have to go back and see these terms are political, not scientific. These things are political with political outcomes, not scientific. Now, hopefully something I said uh, will help you get you moving. Hopefully we can help each other. 
Thank you, Grimner, for all you do and uh, behind the scenes and all the keeping us for the broadcaster and all that other thing. Appreciate all that you do there at reallibertymedia.com. Everybody else has been uh, sending out the, the broadcast. And again, uh, to uh, I've been here 2017. Thank you for the video on top of the audio last week. Uh, all y'all share and like and whatever you can do. Appreciate all that. Until next week, I'll be here. I'll be here next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass.